Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be covering functions in Excel, named ranges, and common errors. Let's first demonstrate the sum function. It's used to add up a range of values, just like a sigma function in math. Because this is a formula, we start with the equal sign. I can type this directly in the cell, or in the formula bar. It doesn't matter. As I start typing, Excel will list matching functions that are available. I can use the arrow keys to select a function, or just continue typing. When I get to the function I want, I press Tab to select it. This presents me with a template for the function. Specifically, it shows me what arguments I need to provide. Arguments are additional data that functions require for computation. In this case, the sum function needs at least one number to add, or a range of cells containing values to sum. Optional arguments appear in square brackets. To specify a range of cells, I can use my mouse to click and drag from the first cell in the range to the last, or I can type the start and end cell references separated by a colon. In addition, notice that the function name in the template is a hyperlink to the help file for that function. The help file describes the function in detail and gives examples on how to use it. After specifying the range, I type a closing parenthesis and press the Enter key. But what if you don't know which function to use? Click on the Insert Function button next to the formula bar. Type a description of what you want to do, and press Enter for a list of possible functions. Alternatively, you can browse through a list of categories. Double-click on the function you want. In this case, select Product to multiply a range of values. In this dialog box, you have areas to enter your arguments, a template and description of the function, and a link to the help file. You can type the cell range, or you can click and drag to select it. The calculated answer appears in the dialog box. Press Enter or click OK to accept the result. Until now, we've been dealing with ranges like A3 to A8. This might be straightforward for a small, simple spreadsheet, but it can be confusing and error-prone in large, complex spreadsheets. To address this, Excel allows you to name cells and ranges. To name a range, first select it. You can enter a name in the Name box, or go to the Formulas menu and select Define Name. Once we name our ranges, we can use the name in formulae, instead of the range. Named ranges are defined using absolute references, so formulae will not change if you copy-paste them. You can review all the named ranges by viewing the Name Manager. A named range is meant to make formulae more easily understandable. To that end, it's important that names be descriptive, to be informative, and unique, to avoid confusion. As an example, Let's use the count function. The count function will count how many cells in the range contain data. Here, we don't enter the range, we enter the name given to the range. For calculating basic statistical values, we have the average function to calculate the arithmetic mean of our values. In addition, we can also calculate the median. The median value is the middle value if our data were sorted. If there is an even number of values, the median is the average of the two middle values. The mode is the most frequent number in a range of values. If multiple numbers have the highest frequency, the mode.single function returns the first one encountered. The standard deviation of a range of values can be computed using the stdevs function. It calculates the standard deviation using the n-1 method. If you know that you should use the n method for your data, use the stdevp function instead. 
The calculation of standard deviation, or the length of the hypotenuse, requires calculating a square root. To do that, simply use the square root function. If you need to calculate trigonometric values, Excel has functions to calculate sine, cosine, tangent, and other functions. But be warned, these functions expect angles to be in units of radians, not degrees. You can convert from degrees to radians using the radians function. Or alternatively, you can perform the conversion yourself, using the pi function to return the value of pi. Sometimes, you might need a random number to introduce variability in your calculations. In such situations, you could use the rand function to return a real value between 0 and 1. Alternatively, you could use the rand between function to return an integer value in an interval you specify. Sometimes, a formula results in an error. The error might occur when the formula is entered, or after another cell is updated. The first error that we will cover is the number sign error. This simply means the cell is too small to display its value. This is really easy to fix. Just resize the cell. The name error occurs when Excel does not recognize text in a formula. It likely means that you misspelled a function or a named range. The value error occurs when an operation is incompatible with the type of data in a cell. For example, this will happen if you try to multiply a number and a word. As its name implies, the divide by zero error occurs when you try to divide by zero. Finally, the ref error occurs when a cell reference is invalid. This typically happens when you delete a cell that is used in a formula. In our next video, we'll continue looking at Excel. Thanks for watching.